Ad Astra Abyss. Ad Astra Abyssa. Ad Astra Abyss. Often, do they? Huh? Are Paimon's eyes playing tricks? Or are there things embedded in the statue? Visions. Visions? You mean all the visions that are collected from the Vision Hunt Decree are put into the statue? So you've already heard of the Vision Hunt Decree. Before I try to explain... I should perhaps remind you first that Mondstadt is the City of Freedom, and Lia is the City of Contracts. As for Inazuma, it's known as the Nation of Eternity. The Raiden Shogun is both the nation's most powerful ruler and its deity. The Eternity in question is her endless and unchanging will to rule over Inazuma. As such, she relies on the Tri Commission to regulate the nation's affairs and the Sokoku Decree to limit the people's movement. The Shogun wishes to keep Inazuma in stasis, allowing the stream of time to flow from one end to the other without disturbing it for all time. Seems like every god has their own will. Of course, this is my own limited understanding. As for the reason behind the recent Vision Hunt Decree, Perhaps the Shogun believes that visions grant people the power to change, and that her eternity doesn't allow for such instability to exist. Whatever the case, the fact is that the Raiden Shogun has dispatched the Tenryo Commission to scour the nation for visions, embedding each one in this statue. And this statue of the Omnipresent God can be seen as Inazuma's symbol of eternity. But if that's the case, what the Raiden Shogun is being... oh, I don't know... selfish? <laughs> Only outlanders such as yourselves would ever dare speak out so directly against the Raiden Shogun. And yet, I agree. The Vision Hunt Decree is something that simply should not exist. And Miss Kamisato has been committed to fighting it since the day it was announced. <laughs> Huh? Hey, are you okay? You look like your mind is elsewhere. 
sound? What sound? I didn't hear anything. Did something happen? Yeah, you touched the statue, and then... And then what? Aspirations? Hmm. That would seem to confirm the saying. Have you heard it before? That when a person's ambition reaches a certain strength, the gods look upon them with favor. That is where visions come from. In other words, a person's vision represents their ambition. So if what you just said is true, then the ambitions of these people are stronger than I imagined. All right, time for the next stop on our tour of Narukami Island, the Kamisato residence. <sighs> Finally! Such a frost! It was worth the trouble. was worth the trouble.
Body and mind. Yes. One with my blade. Submit for judgment. Witness the power of Gugwa.
Swift and merciful. Time for retribution. Hmm. Better than nothing. Outlines your fate. So, this is the kind of place where the big shots of Inazuma live, huh? Hmm. Paimon kinda expected it to be snazzier. Welcome, at last, to the Kamisato residence, honored guests. Miss Kamisato is delighted to finally meet you. Is this the Shirasage Himigimi you keep going on about? So, uh, where's she at? <clears throat> oh, uh, behind the screen? Yes. <laughs> As the daughter of the Yashiro Commission, this is how Miss Kamisato is accustomed to receiving guests. Consider it a time-honored tradition within the Yashiro Commission. Forgive me if this is an unwelcome surprise. Mm, makes sense. She's a super important person after all. Please forgive my lack of courtesy for receiving you in this fashion. Especially following such a long and wearisome journey over the sea. I have awaited your arrival with great anticipation. And Toma assures me that you do indeed possess the power to change the tide of the times. At present in Inazuma, in the name of the Vision Hunt Decree, the people's aspirations are being senselessly trampled underfoot. Though the Yashiro Commission serves the Shogun, it is the people with whom we share close bonds, given the contact we are required to have with them in the performance of our duties. A Commission's power rises and falls with the trust of their people. Thus, we cannot remain indifferent to this situation without also remaining indifferent to our own fate. Traveler, lend us your power and we can... Oh. <sighs> See, milady, it's just like I said. This will take us nowhere. No, please! Wait! Please, don't go! I will introduce you to the Raiden Shogun, on one condition. You must fulfill three small wishes on my behalf. What are your wishes? They pertain to three whose visions were taken from them. Perhaps once you've met them, you will understand. A warrior who guards a village, a former samurai who helped carry out the Vision Hunt Decree, and a swordmaster determined to become the best in the world. Does Paimon get that right? Correct. Please do all you can to help them. I will await your return here. <laughs> then you have my gratitude. <laughs> I'm sure you'll do great.
Yuki, where is the person Ayaka told us about? Why are you doing this? Why leave all of a sudden, after all these years? Precisely. It's much too sudden. We've had no time to prepare. The children are desperate for you to take them out to play. Please, we urge you to reconsider. That must be the guy Ayaka told us about. Let's go over and see. Catch up on my sleep. my opinion, something to do with the Vision Hunt Decree. It's clear that Tejima had done nothing wrong, and still they confiscated his vision. After that, he became a completely different person. I can't claim to fully understand it, but I could tell that he'd lost something very important to him. He went off on a walk, alone, circled the village a few times. And then, out of the blue, he announced that he was going to leave and become a wanderer. Truth be told, we aren't sure whether trying to keep him here is the right thing to do. But equally, it doesn't feel right to let him leave when he's in this state. He's a lost soul. Seems like he's a well-respected guy around here. Ah, uh, you must also be here to try and convince Tejima to stay. Tejima has protected this place ever since he arrived here 30 years ago. Keeping out the treasure hoarders, fending off any monsters that draw near, resolving quarrels between the villagers. He has put an enormous amount of work into looking after this place, and we all think the world of him. But now... All of a sudden, he says he plans to leave us. We can't help but wonder, was it something we did? We will gladly apologize if that's the case. All we want is for him to stay. You must be Tejima. So what's made you want to up and leave all of a sudden? Me? 
I... It's not a question of why I want to leave, but a question of what reason I would have to stay. True, but that's not why I chose to stay here. And what made me want to come here 30 years ago? And why have I never wanted to leave in all that time? I don't have answers to those questions because I can't remember anymore. Ever since they took my vision away, it's like a slice of my memory is gone. In the past, I knew I wanted to stay here. But whatever resolve I had then, it's gone now. So I thought, what's to stop me from moving around instead? The emptiness inside me will be there either way. Okay. Well, in that case, if we help you rediscover the reason you chose to stay, you won't need to leave anymore, right? Hmm. But if you can't remember anything, it's not gonna be easy. Oh! Maybe if you just try a little harder to remember, then it'll all come flooding back? Oh, that reminds me. Last time I brought Tejima some fruit, I do believe I saw him writing in a diary. Mm, I keep a diary? If you say so. I honestly can't seem to remember. Oh yes, yes you do. And what's more, I remember you saying at the time that you wanted to make a note of a few interesting things. Things which would prove very important at a later date. Perfect! So if we want to keep Tejima from leaving, we just need to find his diary. It must be around here somewhere. Let's take a look. If you don't mind, we will leave you to find the diary. We should head back to the village to inform the others of Tejima's situation. Alright, let's see what we have here. Today, the villagers and I got together to cook dried braised salted fish. I messed up and burned mine a little, so I had to pretend that it was Black Snake Head instead. Today, I helped rescue a kid who had fallen in the water. After I pulled him out, he told me that his best friend Bamboo was still in the water. I searched the water the whole afternoon before finding out that Bamboo was the name of his pet crab. I went kite flying today. The string broke, so I chased after it as fast as I could. I soon realized I was never going to get it back, so I just found somewhere to sit and watch as it flew away into the distance. Hmm. Seems like your average diary of daily village life. Huh? Wait! There's more! I went to pray at the shrine again today and stayed there a while. The omamori you gave me has faded a little, but it is still my most treasured possession. Now that's the kind of info we're looking for! Time to pay a visit to the shrine! So this is the Omomori Tejima wrote about. Hmm, interesting. Looking at the color and the design, Paimon would have thought it belonged to a child. But anyway, if he had this with him all the time, there's a chance some of his elemental energy remained on it. Do you think that it might come in handy?
remember that Tejima visited a lot? The soil looks like it's been disturbed. Maybe Tejima buried something precious here. Something that kept him in the village all these years? Must be something pretty amazing if it made him stick around for 30 years. Let's dig it up and take a look. Oh, it looks like a letter. The paper's gone yellow. Must have been written a really long time ago. Konda Village. Sounds so familiar. Where is that place again? Huh. So the reason Tejima came here was to wait for someone. But he's been here for 30 years! Oh, guess they didn't show up in the end, huh? Well, let's go give Tejima his stuff back and take it from there. I'll be. That's certainly my handwriting. And I guess the Omamorian letter belonged to me too. <laughs> but I have no memory of anything that's written in this diary. Still, it's clear that I was waiting for someone here, and that I chose to wait for 30 years. Over the years, I must have made a note of anything interesting. Anything that I could share with her when we were finally reunited. <sighs> and just look at all the things that did happen over the years. The time has flown by so quickly. Thirty years feels like the blink of an eye. How could I have forgotten something so important to me? <sighs> now that I think about it, when my vision was taken from me, it felt like I'd suddenly been... hollowed out. Love, regret, everything I felt for her... it's all disappeared. No, not especially. After all, I've forgotten who she was. Her face, her voice, the things we experienced together. I barely recall any of it. It's as if she'd never been in my life to begin with. As if all these years have been nothing but a hazy dream. Mm, I think maybe not. If this is something I waited most of my life for, I suppose I should carry on waiting. Although, what if she were to turn up eventually? Only to find I didn't remember so much as her name. Wouldn't that be upsetting for her? When I think about it like that, I do feel a slight tinge of sadness in my heart. How curious. Why am I thinking like this when I don't even remember who she is? It's just like that feeling of emptiness. The feeling that something is... missing. <sighs> Thank you both for helping me reconnect with my reason for staying here. I shall remain here and keep waiting for her. Tejima seems to be dealing okay, but still, it makes Paimon really sad. Seems it's just like Ayaka and Toma were saying. If you lose your vision, you lose all your hopes and dreams, too. That certainly explains the state Tejimo was in earlier. At least we were able to help him, weren't we? <sighs> well, let's go find the next person. According to Miss Kamisato, the second one who lost their vision is a...
They say the Tenryo Commission is directly controlled by the Shogun. They're the ones responsible for maintaining law and order in Inazuma. The ones actually enforcing the Vision Hunt Decree. But why would they take action against one of their own? Oh, Paimon doesn't get it. Huh? There seems to be some commotion over there. Let's go see what's happening. I'll ask one more time. Do you intend to withhold this month's emergency provisions? The entire clan is counting on that food. We demand an explanation. How many times do I have to say it? I don't know anything about emergency provisions. You dare deceive us? Those provisions are essential. Do you understand? Not some goods to be pocketed by greedy samurai. You samurai think you can just do whatever you please? The Tenryo Commission will hear of this. Oh, huh? And who are you? One of Kurosawa's gang, no doubt. Uh, what? We just happened to be passing by. We heard the commotion and came to see what the matter was. I see. You seem to have come just at the right time. Perhaps you can help us settle this matter. This is Kurosawa. He's a samurai and a member of the Shogun's army. They issue emergency provisions to the area, and he's the one responsible for distribution. In the past, we'd simply ask him for provisions and everything would be delivered. Now, he suddenly refuses to give us anything. He's keeping the provisions for himself, I just know it! We'll starve without them! No one seems to care about us. We used to think Kurosawa was a kind man, but he's shown his true colors. He's the same as all the other samurai. It's no wonder all the visions have been confiscated. The Raiden Shogun doesn't need people like him helping her rule the nation. This must be one of the people Ayaka asked us to help. But why would she ever want us to help someone like him? Maybe we should talk to Kurosawa and see what he has to say.